So now let's look at deriving an analytic method of working out the Legendre transform of a function. That is, we want to be able to come up with a mathematical formula which will convert a function f of x to its equivalent Legendre transform. So you can go ahead and open up this file here called Legendre transform C. Now this allows us to work out the Legendre transforms using this graphical calculator. So for example, we've got our f of x equals x squared. So that's the one in black here. And the one in blue is the equivalent Legendre transform. So if we were to change this function to say x to the power of 4, then it's going to give us the equivalent Legendre transform, which again is in blue here. So this gives us a method of actually comparing the original function to the new Legendre transform function. And that's going to be handy whenever we go and do some examples. Now, we've seen the, the Legendre transform just as a reminder. We take the original function, we find the gradient of that point at that on the function. The gradient becomes the new independent variable. So, for example, this point 4 here maps to this new point 4 here. And the distance here becomes the new height for the function, and that's that distance here. So we can move the Legendre, the point round about the function f of x equals x squared, and you can see the point equally moves round about the Legendre transform function, which is in blue. So that's revision from the previous video. So let's see if we can work out the mathematical equations which will produce this transform intuitively. Now, we know that we want to make the gradient of this curve the new independent variable. That is, we want to go to the point along x and we want to go up to the curve, find the gradient of the point on that curve and that gradient becomes the new x value, just as you see here, the 3.8 there becomes the 3.8 along this x-axis. So what we're going to have to do, first of all, is come out up with a function for the gradient. Well, that's straightforward enough. We can call the new function s of x, and that's just the gradient of our original function f of x. So in this instance here, we've got f of x is equal to x squared. So whenever we differentiate that, we'll get 2x. So this one in purple here is just the function being differentiated. So if we move that up to, say, 2, you can see here at point 2, the gradient is a value of 4. And that's right, because when we differentiate this, we get 2x. We put the value of 2 in, we'll get the gradient is equal to 4. And that becomes the new point at 4. But of course, this new function s of x is not really the function that we're looking for. Because what we want to do is we want to the height here, 4, to be actually the x value. So that is, what we want to do is we want to make all the y values actually the x values. So that is, we want to find the function which is going to give us the inverse of this line here. Now, in order to get the inverse of this function, what we do is we mirror it on the line y is equal to x. That is, all the y coordinates become all of the x coordinates. So we can do that if you click on this here. You'll see that there's a new function here in purple. And this is going to be the, the function, not s of x, but it will be the inverse function, which is x of s. So this new function x of s, all it does is it maps the original x coordinate onto the new independent variable, which still sits along this axis. And the new independent variable is in effect the gradient of our function in black here. So let me say that once again. The function x of s is going to map the original x-coordinate 
on to the new coordinate which is going to be our gradient. So for example the point 2 here is the original x coordinate and it's going to be mapped onto the gradient at that point. So the gradient at point 2 is the gradient 4. So 2 will be mapped to 4. And you could do the same thing for point 3 if you found the gradient at point 3. So at point 3 the gradient is 6. So that means that this x of s would map point 3 onto point 6. So this is just a way of mapping the original x coordinates onto the new independent variable, which is the gradient. So this is starting to look a bit cluttered, so let's get rid of these two here. So we worked out half of our problem. We worked out the x coordinate of our Legendre transform. That is, how to map the gradient of our original function onto this axis. Now what we want to do is work out how to find the height of the Legendre transform. Now we know the height here is nothing other than the y-intercept for the tangent of our original curve. So I'll bring this down a bit so you can see it's a bit better. So we're trying to find this distance here. But of course, we're going to find the distance, but we want to actually make the distance a positive value. So let's add in a couple of extra lines here. So we have a line here to there, and this extra line here. Now, we're interested in this distance. Now, this distance here is nothing other than this full distance here, minus this part here. So if we can find out the whole distance, full distance here, and if we subtract off this distance, we'll be given this distance here, which is going to be the height of our Legendre transform. So we want to find this distance here. Now we could call this distance, if you like, g. And we know that g is going to equal this full distance here, minus this distance. Now, the full distance here is simply going to be the gradient of this line times this distance. So that is, we get the gradient, we multiply it by the distance here, and we're going to have this length here. So let's say we call the distance this uh, gradient s. Then the full length of this line here is just going to be s times this distance x. Now this height here, well that height there is nothing other than the f of x. So it means that this distance here, g, is going to be equal to our s times x minus the f of x. So before we forget all that, let's go and write it down, and then we'll come back to this uh, graph here. So our original function f of x is the function we wish to Legendre transform. We want to change the original variable x to a new variable, which is the gradient of this function. So we can call this new function s of x, which is equal to the derivative of this original function. So in effect, this s of x will give us the new independent variable, which is the gradient of this function. But we've said that we want to map the y-axis here onto the x-axis. So that is, we don't want to have the gradient as a function of x. We want the actual height here to be a function of the gradient. So we have to find the inverse of this. So the inverse of this is actually x of s. And we've said that the x of s is a way of mapping the original x coordinate of our function we want to Legendre transform onto the new independent variable along this x axis, which is going to be the gradient of our original function. And we said we want to work out the height of our Legendre transform, 
which is going to be the y intercept here. So let's say this height is a value of g. Now we can say that this distance here is going to be the whole distance here minus the distance f. But we know that the whole distance here is nothing other than the gradient of this line. So the gradient is s, and if we multiply that by x, then s times x will give us this height here. And then if we take away this distance here, well this distance here is nothing other than the original height of our function f of x. So we could write that the distance here in terms of our original variable x is going to be the g of x times e, which is equal to s times x, which is this distance, minus the f of x, which is this distance here. But we don't want it in terms of our value of x. We want it in terms of our new independent variable, which is x of s. So what we can do is we've got to replace our value x with the x of s. So remember this x of s just maps the old value of x for this original function onto the new independent variable. So we can just replace this x here with our x of s. So this is finally going to give us the Legendre transform, which is going to be a function of our new independent variable s, such that g of s is going to equal s times x of s minus the f of our new function, which is x of s. So this here is going to give us the Legendre transform of our function, and this is the analytical, me analytical method which we have been driving throughout this video. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll go through a few examples of using this and we'll be able to check our work using our graphical calculator. Thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.